Hey everyone, Mano back here, and today we're going to be showing you how anybody, yes, I mean anybody, can solo flawless the Grasp of Avarice dungeon. This video is going to have every single detail that you need to know to get it done. I've seen a couple of other videos on the topic, and they don't really explain everything, so I want to give you a step-by-step -step guide so you can get this done. Also, as per usual, I won't be using any raid exotics like 1000 Voices, Vex, or Fatebringer. All the gear I'll be using is easily accessible and easy to find. Now, the great thing about this dungeon is you don't have to be glad or even esoteric to solo flawless it. Now, maybe you're someone who doesn't have any friends inside of Destiny 2 to help you get the dungeon done, or maybe you just want to get your hands on Gallarhorn, and you don't have a fire team to get that done. Maybe you just want to get your hands on this sweet emblem and get all the triumphs taken care of. Whatever the reason, this dungeon is a lot of fun to solo flawless, and I hope that all these tips that I share with you will help you get it done. And if it does, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications. I make tons of Destiny video guides. And in addition, I stream over at twitch.tv slash manodestra, where I help people with raids, grandmasters, dungeons, exotic quests, and more. Come on over so we can help you out. All right, enough yakking. Let's get the build set up and the loadout. For this particular run, I'm going to be using my hunter. Hey, you who's about to comment. Yes, you can do this on Titans and Warlocks too. I'll have videos for them as soon as I can. Thank you, moving on. As always, these are just suggestions for builds, but they do make for a very easy solo clear. First up, I would recommend that you get Sleeper Simulant. It is the best weapon for DPS currently with the update this season. If you don't have it, you can go to the Exotic Archive, go over to the Red War Exotics and pick it up. It is relatively cheap. All it takes is an exotic cipher and a couple of materials, and this is going to be your best weapon for almost all of the encounters. Now, do you need the catalyst? No, but it will obviously help. All that you get is a couple of extra shots, plus a slightly increased weapon charge rate. It's not a deal breaker by any means. If you do have it, great. If you don't have it, it's not a big deal. Another good exotic that you might want to use is Wither Horde, which can be found over in the Season of Arrivals tab. It's a really nice grenade launcher. It basically launches a blight that does area of effect damage, which can really help you manage the adds, which are a big part of this dungeon. Again, you don't need the catalyst, but if you have it, it will help. If for some reason you don't have access to Sleeper Simulant, you could also farm for a Threaded Needle. However, you do need to know that Vorpal Weapon has been nerfed this season. If you want to farm for a better roll, Get Frenzy on a Threaded Needle. And of course, all of these are so strong because of the Particle Deconstruction mod where you'll do more damage when you hit things repeatedly with Fusion or Linear Fusion Rifles. Those mods do go over on your class item, so make sure that before you start any of the damage phases that you definitely have Particle Deconstruction on. That will also affect Fusion Rifles in the special slot, like my Cartesian Coordinate. I really like this roll, Lead from Gold and Vorpal Weapon. Again, not a requirement, but this weapon is easily farmed. We're going to use those together because I'm going to be farming for linear fusion ammo. And if you have boss spec, make sure that you put that on your special weapon. It will help you to do more damage. Check at the gunsmith if you don't have it. For my primary weapon, I used an interesting roll that I got for doing the dungeon, which is a Headstone AS Luna, which was absolutely amazing. And in fact, I'm going to be making a video on why this perk, Headstone, is better than Firefly. Now, some people in a lot of videos have been using Firefly Fatebringers for clearing ads, but the truth is, is that Headstone is very strong this season with all the buffs. If you don't have an AS Luna, get a Vulpecula, which is very easily farmed this season. Shoot to Loot is also an amazing perk, so you can get that on this weapon. It will help you out a ton. SMGs are also very strong for certain encounters, especially if they have Dragonfly, and these are readily accessible. There's many SMGs that have that together. Having a bow of some sort is also going to be helpful in a couple of spots, and also using Trinity Ghoul for ad clear with a blinding grenade launcher is awesome. That'd be really good, especially if you want to use a threaded needle. Another option for those people who want to do something different is to get a sword build. You don't need to do this. Of course, with the changes to swords, Lament is now going to be your best go-to sword weapon. And if you do that, make sure that you put passive guard on. Again, that is an artifact mod, and that will go on your class item. That will be really, really strong. Having a sword for some of the jumping sections will also help you out a ton, especially if you're having problems with your jumps. Okay, let's talk armor. For my hunter, I'm going to be using an arc-based 6 coyote, which will give me a second dodge charge, which will be really strong. Again, I can't stress, especially for the boss phase, double arc resist is huge if you want to stay alive because there's so much arc in the final boss encounter. If you have a different role, like say for Void, it's not a big deal. That will help you out more in the second encounter. But again, it is not something that you have to have. 
Stompies is going to be helpful in any of the sections where you're jumping around and platforming. Another mod that will help you out is Linear Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder. Now, why it's so strong with this build is you will see that I am getting a ton of heavy ammo, and that will help me get my Sleeper Simulant Ammo and my Lead from Gold Cartesian Coordinate. That is a great roll. If you've got Linear Fusion Rifle Scavenger, that will also be strong, as well as any Charge with Light mods or anything else that you feel comfortable using. Again, all of these things are just recommendations. All right, let's hop into the Eternity area and launch the Grasp of Avarice Strike. First thing we've got is the Loot Cave Dungeon Entrance. This is basically revisiting the old days of shooting into the Loot Cave to get exotics. Those were the days back in Destiny 1, which was basically a fake community event where people discovered that they could get exotics really easily from shooting into a cave over in the Cosmodrome. That's what this whole idea is built around. So first step, kill these enemies here. They will be trying to swarm you coming out of the cave. What you'll then do is pick up these exotics and you'll notice that you're getting a debuff called Burden by Riches. And every time you pick it up, it will recharge your buff, but also give you another stack. All the enemies will respawn when you're about this distance away from the cave. And there will be some enemies to the side. So if you want to knock them out quickly, that will help out. All right, what do you do with the Burden by Riches debuff? There's a crystal inside the cave that looks kind of like a salt crystal. You need to go stand near that crystal and it will start to take your burden by ridges. It's essentially going to deposit them in. To enter the dungeon, you need to deposit 50 burdens total. So that means that once you get rid of all of your burdens, you'll move on out the distance of Lulu Cave and rinse and repeat. Now, if you run out of time with your burden by riches buff, you'll actually die. So you need to make sure that you're watching that timer at all times. At this point, you're gonna run past this. If you are looking for the Gallarhorn Catalyst, I have a video for that. Check down in the description box below. That starts in that area, but we're basically just gonna push forward to the Skywatch with the bait and switch encounter. There's a ton of booby traps in this area. What you need to do is head to this door and then jump up on the desks, head over to the switch and activate it. Make sure that you don't run on the floor because these spikes to the right here will kill you instantly. Head into the door that opened in this little tunnel and what will happen is you'll need to hop on a platforms, but they will fall as soon as you step on them. You want to do that and actually fall down into this room here and hit the next switch. Then I'd recommend turning on stompies just to make this jump a little bit easier because these platforms will descend really quickly. Again, using a sword will very much help you, especially if you're on a solo flawless run, as you can get a little bit more distance when you swing your sword. Okay, head to the top and head to the top right vent. There's gonna be a button right here that you can press. And as soon as you do that, you can jump up into the next area. Jump up onto this platform. Do not go where the arrow says to go because there's a pressure plate there that will kill you instantly. Make your way across here. Watch out for these plates because they will drop instantly when you step on them and keep moving forward. Next, you're gonna be in this reservoir area. What you're gonna do is open and hit the switch, head to the next open area. Now be careful when you go into here, there's a pressure plate on the right hand side where if you step on it, the spikes will hit you. So don't step there. Go to this left side and kill all the enemies. Now the enemies do infinitely spawn. So just take a second, knock out the group of them and then deactivate the switch. Now you'll find that the doors have switched a little bit. So just go to the next open door and you'll see that there is another door that's open on the opposite side. Come down into this area again there is another pressure plate down in the center but it actually can kill the enemies as well so just be careful as you're doing that and then activate that switch that will open up guess what another door there's that switch you shouldn't stand on move over to the open door and make your way across to the final area so head on across there's going to be two switches you might want to hit here when you hit this switch it will activate the correct doors but you want to jump up into this area this will open up the big door on the opposite side of the entrance where you came in. So when that happens, I would recommend turning on some kind of a long range weapon. I did find that Sleeper does the trick here because there's going to be a Shrieker that spawns out here. The cool thing about dealing with the Shrieker, you can actually shoot through this fence and actually do damage to it, but it can't damage you. That's why we're using a bow. Sleeper does the trick, but then you'd have to lose your sword, which will be a little tough. Knock out the Shrieker as well as the other enemies and then make your way across. Again, having a sword is going to be very, very helpful. Go into this area here. There will be another switch that you can hit. 
and that will open up the door on the far side and that is where you need to proceed next use the platforms and the switches to go over and if you can't make those jumps you can always activate different switches to help you make your way across now there's two doors when you go forward go to the door with the orange light and hit that the other door will kill you instantly now you're in this central circular area here there's going to be a ton of doors that are numbered as well as a couple of enemies especially wizards that can kill you very easily knock them out first then head over to door one and activate the switch that will go and activate a door on the opposite side which will reveal a bunch of enemies and then you need to go in there and hit the next switch basically hit the switch find the enemies in the door they came out of kill them hit the next switch move on you're going to do this a couple of times just watch out for the wizards because they can kill you very easily especially if they use their stun cloud attack which is really annoying to deal with knock them out first and move on when you've hit all the switches, door two will open and you will find an enemy with a Scorch Cannon. The Scorch Cannon is one of the main elements of this dungeon. What you need to do is find a charge port, which will look like it has a little circular dial on it. You'll want to shoot inside the center of it and activate it. You can charge the Scorch Cannon by holding down your fire button and then releasing when you're ready. Okay, now pay attention. When you go up the stairs, there will be gaps in the left and the right. Once you get past the second gap, a giant metal barrel will come down and try to kill you. So just make sure you stay alive and move on forward. All right, this next area is where you might need to get the Gallarhorn Catalyst again. Again, check that video down in the description box and make your way around over here to the next encounter. This is going to be the first encounter that actually gets you loot and combines the Scorch Cannon with the Burden of Riches and the Salt Crystals. So, see this Salt Crystal right here in the middle? That's going to be super important later. That is where you deposit your Burden of Riches and keep yourself alive. All right, let's go through the encounter. You need to kill the enemy that has the Scorch Cannon, and luckily the Ogre is helping you out. Once you get the Scorch Cannon, you'll see that there are two charge ports on the left and the right. The left one should be the one that is open. Once it charges up enough, You'll be able to open the garage doors on the left or the right sides respectively once you get these thralls down and there will be a bunch of thrall chasing you throughout the encounter open the door and you'll see a ton of enemies feel free to use your supers you will see why shortly use your supers on these folks as much as you possibly can it is totally okay because you're going to get your super back very quickly here's the deal when you collect 10 burdens all of your abilities will instantly recharge. However, it's going to remove any double abilities, like say, for example, if you have two melees or two dodges or things like that. Okay, once you get that, you have two choices. You can either get another Scorch Cannon and open the other side, or you can go deposit your Burden by Riches. Remember, if you run out of time with your Burden of Riches, you will die. So I opted to go and be safe, deposit my Burden of Riches, get the Scorch Cannon, and move on. The next thing you need to do is grab that Scorch Cannon again, and instead of going to the left side, the right side charge port will be open, and you rinse and repeat. Open up that door, and again, if you're doing this on solo, make sure you use your super. Now, if you're doing this with a team for some reason, you'll want to make sure you work together because one of you might want to keep your super. As long as you get Burdened by Riches stacks of 10 at least, you will get all of your abilities back. All right, so let's talk about damage. To start the boss damage, you'll need to deposit 25 burdens total. You'll also need to clear them because they won't automatically clear when you start boss damage. Stay near the crystal until you've deposited all of your burdens and then do damage. Sleeper does amazing work here. Now you do need to be careful to use cover throughout this. I use this spot as well as actually going into some of the garages to stay alive. At this point, if you've lost your Scorch Cannon, an enemy will show up shooting at you with a Scorch Cannon. So if you can hold on to it for as long as possible, that will help you out during DPS. Now, what happens when you're done with DPS? You literally just rinse and repeat. Nothing crazy about it. What you need to do, pick up the Scorch Cannon, open up the doors, kill some enemies, grab some burdens, deposit them, and rinse and repeat. Those people who want just a quick TLDR, here's the things to remember. Check your burdens always so you don't die, and don't get too many because that will waste time at the crystal. Fall back for DPS, use cover as much as you possibly can, and try to keep the Scorch Cannon. When you're doing damage on the Ogre, use Precision Hits to get as much damage as possible, as well as Particle Deconstruction that will stack the more you hit it with a Fusion Rifle. And also, use your Super often. You're going to get your abilities back constantly throughout this encounter, so just keep doing that and you'll be good to go. When the boss is almost dead, he will start chasing you higher and higher up the ledge here. Again, using the Garage is very safe, but using cover like I'm using here is an easy way to make sure that he doesn't kill you. 
Once that's done, head to the chest, pick up your loot, and move on. All right, the next encounter is one of my favorite, but also for many people, a little bit scary. But don't worry, I've got you. We're going to show you what you need to do to get the Sparrow Run taken care of. So the door opens, and you'll see that there's a mine off in the distance that you need to dismantle. You basically just need to get there as soon as you can. But there are some mine fuse extending switches over here, and I'm going to show each of those locations during this Sparrow Run. So if you're having issues with this, make sure that you follow the video if you want to slow it down too. That will help you out. The biggest thing you want to do is get a sparrow that you can get on and off and also summon very quickly because there will be times you'll need to summon it because it will be damaged from the enemies left and right. Continue following the path that you see here on screen. You can see that I'm hitting every switch and if you need to hop off your sparrow, there's no reason to stay on it, especially if it's taken any damage. This area is probably one of the more challenging. Just slowly hit that switch and then head into this engine area here. Now I try to go a little bit slower into this area because you can get knocked off underneath that little bridge that I went through. Just take your time. And the great thing about this is that you don't need to use all the switches if you want to run really quickly, but for a solo flawless run, I definitely make sure you hit all the switches and follow the path that you see here on screen. Now, this last area, you'll want to make sure that you have a sparrow that's nearly at full health. I'm going to use the left man cannon or booster over here, and that will take me to the final mine extending switch. And you can just hop off, kill the enemies. Make sure you go directly into this mine here because it could easily kill you if you're not fast enough. If you want to go to the right side, you can definitely do that, but you won't get the extension of time. At this point, I'd recommend if you've got it, turning to Wither Horde as well as an SMG and a sword because a lot of this stuff that we're going to be doing is going to be close range engagements. All right, the next area is the Sunken Lair or the Cannonball Encounter, as I like to call it, because it's got a pirate theme, right? Here's how the encounter works. There are man cannons on every island as well as an enemy with a Scorch Cannon. What you're going to do is find the charge port and then shoot the scorch cannon at the charge port. Anything near the man cannon is going to get sucked through and shot over to the next island wherever you have aimed it. So you're just going to rinse and repeat. Use this to move from island to island and you're going to be looking for this servitor that is immune. So here's what you do. Kill as many of these enemies as possible. You'll see that they are dropping the engrams that give you burden by riches again. In each of the islands, there will be a spot where there is a crystal where you can deposit all of your burdens of riches. The enemies will basically spawn infinitely, so it's going to be easy for you to stack up all the burdens that you need. You can see here that using a sword and wither horde are really good because there's a lot of close range engagements here. Okay, so to kill the servitors, which is the next part, you need to deposit 20 of the burdens into the salt crystal. Make sure you clear all of your burdens before you start. Once you kill the servitor, it's going to leave a core behind. Do be careful if there are other enemies around because they will deposit burdens and you need to clear those before you start the next phase. Okay, so here's what you do. You take the core and you maneuver it to the man cannon and then you're going to shoot it at the fallen shield. Do note that the core has a ton of momentum and can easily fall off the edge. All you need to do is just tap it in the direction you want it to go. And if you do this too many times, you'll actually get kicked to orbit. There is a glitch going on right now, which hopefully they will fix. In any case, make sure that your man cannon is aimed at the fallen shield. Charge up the charge port with a scorch cannon and watch the cannonballs fly. At that point, you'll move on to the next area. So look around for the immune servitor with the shield. They're usually pretty easy to find. Rotate the man cannons wherever you want them to go. Shoot yourself through, rinse and repeat. Now be careful, don't stand in the man cannons until you know you've rotated them in the right area because the enemies can actually activate them as well. All right, so all you need to do is rinse and repeat. Find the immune servitor, kill the enemies, deposit the burdens. After that, knock out the servitor. Always making sure that you get rid of all all of your burdens of riches to make sure you don't die and then push the cores into the man cannons grab a scorch cannon charge them up shoot them off to the fallen shield and then look for the next servitor all you need to do if you can't see one is basically shoot yourself up to the top so at this point i can't really see the servitor so at this point just head up as high as you can go and you will probably be able to see that servitor. A quick note, there will be no servitor on the middle island, so you don't need to be looking there. Just be looking all around the edges here. Now, there are many places that you can actually damage the shield, but you only need to hit four total shots on the fallen shield to actually clear it and proceed. Okay, another TLDR. Biggest things to remember, check your burdens always. 
basalt crystals are farther away on this encounter. So if you have extra burdens and you're being moved around, you've got to move very quickly so that you don't die to the burdens of riches. All you got to do is tap in those servitor cords. You don't need to do much. Make sure that you aim your cannons first. And if you can't find the servitor, look to go up. All right, that's everything you need to know to get the cannonball encounter done. Once you shot the final cannonball at the fallen shield, the shield will dematerialize and you will be able to move forward. Now, some of the cannons will get locked into place. That's to help you get the final Gallarhorn catalyst as well as some of the bottles. If you have any questions about that, check in the description box below. Charge this cannon and head up into the final encounter. All right, for the final boss encounter, you want to make sure that you have sleeper simulant and your Cartesian coordinate or whatever fusion rifle you want to use for damage on at this point. All right, let's talk about the basic layout of the room. There's a bunch of platforms that you can stand on, water that you should never go near because even if you dip a toe inside of it, you could possibly die. So there's a left, middle, and right side of the room, plus a central area where the boss is going to hang out most of the time. If you're staying behind cover, he will continue to throw mines at you that can stun you, so try to knock them out quickly. At that point, look at the central location. There is going to be a shank that you're going to want to take care of as quickly as possible because he can snipe you continuously. In addition, there's a larger fallen enemy over with him, as well as a scorch cannon enemy that will be moving throughout the chamber. Once you kill the Scorch Cannon enemy, you can use this Scorch Cannon at will. As long as you're holding onto the Scorch Cannon, another Scorch enemy will not appear. So basically, you want to keep your cannon with you at all times as you're moving throughout the chamber. I like to use this opportunity in between killing the Shank and the larger fallen enemy in the center to also get a lot of heavy ammo. With the changes that Bungie has made to primary and heavy ammo, this is a great opportunity for you to use your primary weapon or a Scorch Cannon, and that will help you generate heavy ammo throughout the chamber. At this point, knock out the larger fallen enemy in the middle, and this is really important because you may have noticed, but there is a Salt Crystal in the middle. That is where we're going to deposit all of our burdens, and if that Shank and that larger fallen enemy are not dead, it is going to be really bad as you try to move through the next part of the encounter. As soon as the larger fallen enemy is dead, you can head to the center. He actually drops 10 of the burden and grams. Now, I'm using Bottom Tree Night Stalker, so I'm abusing the dodge near the enemies and spamming invisibility grenades. That will easily allow me to grab those engrams and deposit them on the salt crystal without having to really worry about the boss or the other enemies attacking me. Okay, once you've deposited those, Here's what you're going to do. Grab the Scorch Cannon and look for the charge ports. There's one on each side and then also one on the front. Look for the one that is open. Charge them with the Scorch Cannon and what will happen is these canisters around the wall will drop an absolute ton of the Burden by Riches exotic engrams. While bringing the Scorch Cannon with you so it doesn't disappear, grab as many of the engrams as you desire and then head to the middle to deposit them. The engrams will detonate and disappear after a certain period of time, but this brings me to a very important point. You only want to grab as many engrams as you're comfortable depositing. What I mean by that is you can stack as many burdens as you want, but the more charges that you have, the longer you have to stand on the crystal where you're more exposed to the different enemies. In other words, the greedier you are, the longer you have to stay on the salt crystal itself. So to damage the boss, you need to get 60 total stacks of the Burden by Riches on the center crystal. At this point, Avarok will then move to the back of the ship and you can do damage. So how do you get 60 total stacks? Basically just repeat the process of grabbing the Scorch Cannon, charging up an open charge port, making sure that you kill enemies in the meantime while you're doing this. Collect as many of the engrams as you're comfortable getting and you're good to go. I did 10 from the central fallen enemy sets of 20 from the walls and then a 10 but you need to do what you can you want to make sure that you don't have extra burdens with you when you're ready to do boss damage any of the remaining burdens that you have will not be cleared as soon as it starts so if you have extra you have to stay on the salt crystal to make sure that you don't die here's a reminder of something i've been saying throughout the entire dungeon look for your burden by riches timer constantly so here i'm showing you an example of what not to do Look at my left side screen. I've still got burden by riches times two and I'm off on the left. I realize that I'm about to die almost at the last second the screen starts to turn red and I got very, very lucky. So always make sure that you get rid of all of your stacks, especially before boss damage. Okay, let's show you a really good damage phase. What I do is head to this left back mast over here. I bring the Scorch Cannon with me and at this point, 
the enemies can't really damage me. The captain can, but the other enemies are going to try and throw mines at me, maybe get a couple of shots off, but you'll see I'm mostly safe here. You'll see a ton of damage being done with Sleeper Simulant stacking with the Particle Deconstruction buff. It does insane amount of damage. If you run out of Sleeper Simulant ammo, you can actually head to the left-hand side behind Avarok and do a ton of damage over there. During boss DPS, you want to make sure that you have the Scorch Cannon with you because if you don't have the Scorch Cannon with you, a new Scorch Cannon enemy will appear and chase you throughout the room. It will be very tough to do damage at that point. Okay, so now just repeat the process all over again. Kill the shank, kill the larger fallen enemy. If you want to collect his burdens or just grab the Scorch Cannon, charge up these canisters, collect all the engrams on the side, and then deposit them on the center salt crystal. Kill some enemies with the Scorch Cannon or your primary to generate heavy ammo. And once you've deposited 60 burdens on the center salt crystal, do damage to the boss. All right, the biggest things to remember here. This is your checklist. Check your burdens always. Keep the Scorch Cannon with you, especially during boss DPS. Kill Avarok's crew, that's the Shank and Gris packs, the larger fallen enemy in the center. Make sure you only get 60 burdens for DPS. Don't do more because if you do that, you'll have to stand on the Salt Crystal and be exposed to the enemies for a longer period of time and not do great boss damage. Clear more adds for more heavy, especially with your primary. And then do damage at the back left mast with your Sleeper Simulant. If you're on a hunter, use your invis and grenade spam to safely deposit all your burdens on the salt crystals. Once you understand all the mechanics, it's really easy to knock out the boss as the fight doesn't feel nearly as chaotic. The pace of the fight is all based on how comfortable you are in picking up the burdens and then doing damage from safe locations. If you feel comfortable, pick up more burdens to get to the boss DPS faster and you're going to be in good shape. If you use all the tips and tricks inside of this video, you are going to knock out the boss really easily and make the grasp of Avarice Flawless Solo Run a GG for you. Starting next week, there will be no lockout on picking up loot from each of the encounters, so you can farm it pretty much endlessly. This video has been chock full of tips and tricks to easily get this done, and I hope that has helped you out a ton. If you found any part of this video to be helpful or useful, consider leaving a like and a comment down below. Did you learn anything from this guide? Is there something you're still working with? Let me know down in the comment section below. By doing that, you help support my channel as well as getting this video to help other people get this dungeon done. If you want to see more Destiny 2 content, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single video. Also, swing on over to twitch.tv slash manodestra. I do a ton of Grandmaster, Raid, Exotic Helps, and Dungeon Helps. I'm going to be doing a ton of helps for this particular dungeon. Also, if you want to find other people to game with or run dungeons or anything else with, come join our community Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.